I have already three good mornings in the chat box. But let me wish all of you a very good uh, morning. We are slowly getting back to normalcy, unlock 1.0, unlock 2.0. And today, I think government may announce unlock 3.0. So let's start looking forward to life. And let's also do a little bit of introspection on what life has uh, given us. Let us not be so obsessed right now with whatever is happening or has happened in the last one year. Let us look at our entire life right from the beginning and how things uh, have been with us. Those of you who have never experienced physical hurt, you belong to the category of Superman and Supergirl and those people where only kryptonite can affect uh, uh, you and you do not feel uh, hurt. Those of you who have never had a mental hurt, if you can say that in my entire life nobody has managed to hurt me or make me feel upset or pull me down or make me feel cheated, disappointed. If you belong to that category, I would definitely like to meet you because I think you are one step ahead of Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, all these people, because even they felt very hurt sometimes with the way things happened with uh, uh, them. So accepting the fact that 99.9% .9 of us have been through some very good experiences, some reasonable experiences, and also some experiences which we will refer to as hurting. I'm just using a very general common word. It could be that somebody was very abusive or rude to me. It could be that somebody cheated me of something. It could be that somebody who let me down in my trust. It could be various uh, figures. But the bottom line of it is that I felt hurt because of whatever happened. Let us also accept the fact that hurt comes only from human beings. If I am living in a coastal area and a tsunami hits and even knocks down my house, I get very concerned. I feel very sad. I start thinking in terms of what to do, how to build it back. But I don't really feel hurt because I know that nobody is responsible for it. It was an act of nature and it had to happen. OK, I may even ask myself, why me? There are so many coastal areas and people. Why did this tsunami have to hit me? But still, there is no you know, emotional hurt involved in it. But supposing some human being were to do something uh, like that, then we definitely have a hurt. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. So let us first accept the fact that whenever anybody says, I feel very hurt, I feel very disappointed, I feel cheated, I feel very upset about whatever has happened, it is directly or indirectly connected to one or more human beings. Now, when I get hurt, somebody is bad to me in whatever uh, way like it happens in physical uh, wounds, sometimes we can go by that proverb that, you know, uh, time is the best healer. You will even have people saying when if you go and confide in somebody saying that I got very badly hurt, I got cheated, I felt very miserable because of X, Y, Z, whatever happened to me. There are people who say it's OK, it doesn't matter. Take it easy. Soon you will feel better. I beg to differ with such uh, uh, people because just offering, you know, platitudes by saying everything will be uh, all right. I've even heard to the extent of people saying if I go to somebody and I say that somebody very close to me has passed away and I'm feeling extremely distressed. No, no, it's OK. Things will get better. Don't worry about it. Firstly, what do you mean it is OK? It is not OK. Secondly, everything will be all right. How can everything be all right? Can you get that uh, loved one of mine back from heaven or hell or wherever uh, is? You cannot do uh, that. And then people say things like, don't worry. Don't take it so uh, seriously. In my childhood in Hyderabad, I remember there used to be a proverb which 
where the people used to say light lay or light lay don't take it heavy take it light okay as children are uh, going through small small things we could accept it but strictly speaking you know in real life we cannot take a lot of things lightly the same as physical uh, wounds if i have a slight cut i can ignore it i can just wash it off or put a bandage and say that okay it will heal by itself but if it is a serious wound i better do something about it right at least in physical uh, wounds we are aware of whatever is uh, happening as the very word suggests it is physical i can see i can feel that physical pain so we normally make sure that we immediately go for proper it and we know where to go to also if i feel that the uh, i fell down and the pain is so bad that there may be a fracture i will go to an orthopedic surgeon i will not just go to the you know immediate neighborhood uh, doctor i may go to a hospital if i feel that i'm having a heart attack so i will go to the best hospital available where they have an iccu available those sort of uh, you know steps which i normally take for physical pain physical setbacks physical letdowns we do not do it for mental pain mental letdowns and mental hurts sometimes we try to think that it's okay it will pass off if it is that deep it will not, not only not you know pass off but it will also be festering like a wound which i have not treated what happens it can keep getting worse and worse it can become septic it can become poisonous it the thing can spread somewhere else so same thing happens over uh, here so i want you to please at this juncture <clears throat> introspect just quickly after today over the weekend make a list of the important changes that came in your life i moved from one school to another i was sent to live with my grandparents i after x years there was a birth of a younger sibling to me i completed my school and then i went to college in another uh, uh, city like that it goes on i got married maybe i became a parent or i got a job or i lost a job so very uh, you know simply in bullet form take this weekend to write down all the major incident that have happened in your uh, life good bad or ugly it doesn't matter because also remember that every incident every experience cannot be put in a category of good or bad sometimes what we think is bad turns out to be good sometimes what we think is good turns out to be bad so don't worry about the good and bad just make that list what were the you know important changes or incidents that happened in my uh, life and then start cutting off from there those which did not have any impact i think this transition was very smooth but think don't just uh, cut it off maybe there was something small somewhere that hurt you that put you off do not neglect it just because you have moved on uh, uh, um yes and how do we uh, empathize with the death of parents in the case of a child what's the best way to explain you know without uh, blaming this is something that we have to do personally depending on the age of the child depending on the sensitivity of the child please get in touch with us we will guide you not only me i have next to me the super woman who organizes all these uh, webinars and all these things she is the one who is an expert in understanding uh, children issues with regard to you know handling children particularly something like this you know when a, a child has uh, you know face the death of a parent or of parents as you have written over uh, here it can be the most traumatic thing that child's whole mental emotional life can be destroyed if we don't help that uh, uh, child so i just like sonal to say hello um, yes. uh, to you hello and say that she is yes. available i am available you can call office and i'll help you out dhana uh, right so going back to what i was uh, uh, telling you that make that uh, um, exhaustive list and start a knockout type of thing okay this i am uh, uh, sure
Kirti Bhagre is saying hello Sonal. Hi, Kirti. In Hindi. <laughs> okay. So, what uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, do is to ensure that we are not overlooking something. The same way as if you go to a very good doctor, a holistic doctor, and say that right now I've got a stomach ache or headache or whatever. What does that doctor do? That doctor goes into your entire history. What happened here? What happened there? Earlier, did you have any problem? Did you get hurt anywhere? Did you go through any diseases? Do you have, you know, blood pressure problems or blood sugar problems? Like that, you know, people make you go through that uh, uh, thing, um, right? See, Sonal is so popular that she just said hello and I'm getting so many hello, Sonal. Good morning, Sonal. Uh, over there. Of course, I'm getting good morning, Ali, also. And good morning to all of you. Yes, it's always a pleasure. I really cherish these Saturday morning uh, meetings, not because I have some great gyan to give you, but in the second half, I myself learn so much just by the comments, questions that come in, like how Anna mentioned about, you know, how to deal with a uh, child whose parents have passed away. Now, these are things which we are not equipped for. Nobody has taught us this, what to do, how to go about uh, it. It is high time that we learned. It is high time that we went forward. So this is for, you know, to help you to understand that if we can deal with our past hurts, we are that much more equipped to help others deal with their uh, uh, current hurts or hurts of today, which can become very difficult or very uh, you know, painful later in uh, life. So starting off uh, uh, with uh, uh, that, please understand that you will have certain hurts which have not been fully emotionally resolved. Yes, uh, I was sent to hostel when I was a child. OK, I got used to it. And I afterwards, I started enjoying hostel life also. And But I do recollect that I felt very hurt that why did my parents send me away and not my sister? I felt, do they not love me? Why are they sending me off to the hostel and keeping sister at uh, uh, home? And I never got an answer to it. I could not question my parent because they would get uh, upset. I did not get uh, support from anybody uh, uh, else. So because of that, I just suffered. And then I said, OK, now I am happy in the boarding and I'm enjoying with my friends. So I gave it up. But today, five years later or 50 years later, I still carry that hurt. And I have not been able to resolve it. Sometimes we do not probe or go back into it thinking that, no, my parents always loved me. They went out of the way to be nice to me. I know that they didn't even have money to pay for that hostel. They had to really struggle to pay the fees of the boarding, but still they did it for me. So when they were so nice, when they were so loving, when they made so many sacrifices, how can I think badly of them? How can I say that? Why did they send me off? Now, in all these cases where I have had a past hurt, which I have not resolved, let me be very clear on one aspect, and that is, if I am trying to resolve a past hurt, it does not automatically mean that I am putting somebody down or I am blaming somebody or accusing somebody. Yes, my parents may have done it with very good intention. But if I was hurt because of that incident or their action, I am hurt. It is no reflection on the capabilities or the intentions of my parents, but I need to resolve it for myself. If I can resolve it with them, sit down, make them talk, give my viewpoint, nothing like it. But for whatever reason, if that is not possible, if for some reason that is not OK, uh, you know, and I feel no, or maybe my parents are no longer there for me to talk to them and try to resolve them, it doesn't matter. I still need to resolve it. So go through that list and see whatever is left over in that. And then we will talk about how to go about resolving it. Okay. Now, out of that long list that you made, you may have been able to knock out quite a few and say, no, I'm sure that these are definitely not hurting me today. Maybe at that time I felt bad or whatever, but I have overcome it and I know the rationality and everything. I'm very clear. Maybe even gives a few days time, sleep over it, as they say, no. That list which you make this weekend, keep it till next weekend and open it and see. By the time your thought process would be a little more clearer and a little more uh, uh, focused, 
So do that and check out that am I uh, you know on the right uh, uh, track and am I uh, connecting properly? Am I resolving? Uh, you know, I mean reviewing it uh, properly. Once I've done that, then we will have this short list of those which even possibly are still hurting me. Because as I told you, we tend to become defensive. No, how can I blame my parent? How can I do this? How can I put so and so? How can I accuse somebody? You're not accusing somebody. You're not putting down somebody. You are just acknowledging that this emotional baggage I am still carrying, this hurt is still there with me. And I want to do something about it. I want to overcome the thing. OK, here, perhaps the first step would be to check out what was the intensity and what was the duration. OK, please remember that stress is cumulative. If somebody hurt me, some teacher was bad to me, let us say. I'm just using examples from the past. Or I had my uh, some father-in-law who used to be very rude to uh, me. If the intensity was not very high and if the duration was not very high, after that we moved out and then I'm not living with my in-laws or I got promoted, I went off into the next class and then after that uh, things have been fine. So if the intensity was not very high and if the duration was not very long, it is comparatively easier. But if it was for a long time, I know of people who have suffered at the hands of somebody for years and years. Those are the ones that you have to take care. Even if it has been resolved now, even if today it is not an issue, you have overcome it and you are leading a fairly nice, comfortable life. Remember that you will not be able to enjoy your life completely as long as you know that past hurt is still there. In fact, when people have continuous trauma, continuous being oppression for a very long time, you know, it can go to an extreme which is referred to by mental health professionals as PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic, what does it mean? After trauma, the incident took place, I was oppressed, I was hurt, I was cheated. After that, post-traumatic stress disorder, that stress which I went through at that time does not get reduced once the trauma is over. It remains with me in the form of a disorder, even lifelong if I don't do anything about it. So in extreme cases, a very bad hurt can become even to the extent, as I mentioned, a post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. So. When we say that, okay, we have to start doing something, we have to resolve it. The first thing that you need to get away from and resolve even before you resolve your hurt is, am I asking this question, why me? Why me? Why not me? It can happen to anybody and it did happen to me. But if I'm stuck in that thing of why me? See, my brother is so well off. My neighbor is so well off. My colleague is uh, uh, enjoying life. Why does it happen to me? So please stop comparing this thing of saying why uh, me. As long as you are doing that, you will not be able to heal uh, yourself. On the other hand, if you find similar victims, please connect with them. Please find out more about them. So when you see that there are people who went through worse situations or similar situations, it helps. In the West, for every possible setback, trauma, every possible you know, negative experience, there are self-help groups. Mothers who lost their child to violence would be a group. Mothers who lost their child to accident, mothers who lost their child to cancer, separate groups for each one of uh, uh, them. People who underwent trauma because of an abusive boss, there will be a separate group uh, for uh, uh, them. So like that, there are so many self-help support groups in the West, which are very therapeutic. They do wonders. But in India, we have this hesitation, we have this resistance. No, how can I meet total strangers and talk to them? 
how can I share my personal things with other people? By doing that, as I told you, you know, we get stuck in that thing called PTSD or that why me? Please make sure that uh, uh, you know things are done. Yes, and do past hurts cause physical health issues and how severe could it be? It can be very severe. Remember that the majority of the uh, people who undergo, let us say, severe cardiac problems. I have a very respected and a very beloved uh, cardiac uh, uh, physician, you know, who actually was in charge of the ICCU in General Hospital Chennai for 30 years, Dr. Sai Kumar. He says, because he's a very humane person, he says that very often, I, all the cases that would come to us with intensive cardiac uh, issues had some emotional trauma attached to it. And that would aggravate the situation and that would slow down the healing process. Both ways it causes. It can be very severe in certain uh, cases. Okay. The other thing is trying to justify yourself. I'm talking about the hurdles that prevent us from proceeding on the healing part of uh, it. Why did he hurt me when I was so nice to him? I did everything to be nice to him, but he turned around and he did all the nasty things to me. Why did he do that? Please remember that he is he or she is she, you are you. If you spend your time and energy psychoanalyzing the oppressor, you will be wasting your time. You may or may not get an answer. You may or may not get a confirmation whether your answer or analysis is correct or not. But eventually what will happen is that your focus would go on the oppressor instead of focusing on yourself. I was so nice to my so and so, yet he was so bad to me. Now we, I have shifted the focus to that person. That's not a good thing to do. Who is important to you? It is you yourself. Whose healing are we talking about? Your healing, not the healing of the other person or not the psychoanalysis of the other uh, person. Yes, if you can analyze and find out the why part of it, which is what we call as empathy. If I can calmly, rationally sit down, get all the data, information and find out but with the exact cause of why he behaved in a manner which has hurt me so badly. It does help me to a certain extent to be able to cool down on uh, that. Now, people who do not take this trouble of doing all this, you know, the other thing that happens other than the physical health issues, which Anna said, the other thing that uh, um, happens um, is that we start focusing so much on the other person that we start thinking of revenge. I will not let this person go scot-free. How dare he do this and get away with uh, uh, it? How do we allow such a person to be so nasty? I will do something about uh, uh, it. That is the most horrible thing that you can do to yourself. Forget about the other person. Firstly, whether the other person is available to you or not to take revenge. Secondly, whether you are capable of taking the revenge. Thirdly, do I really get uh, yeah, you know, that satisfaction and was, um, do I get to know whether I really hurt that person and whether that gives me uh, uh, satisfaction. Jyoti is asking, jealous people hurt us and treat bad how to deal with such a uh, person. See, there are two aspects of what I'm talking about today. If you remember the topic I had said, dealing with past hurts. Now, if there is a jealous person or whatever, maybe his reasons, he's jealous or whatever his reason is, but this person is hurting us me today, then I need to focus on what I need to do to resolve that. It's a completely different issue. How do I cope with it? How do I respond to it? How do I get back um, on it? What I am talking about uh, uh, today is what Kirti says, how people give closure to past hurt, love relationship after 20 years, be it two years, be it 20 years, that's not significant. If it is hurting me today, 
I need to do something uh, uh, about it. Anu is asking is walking away from the person who hurt us. Is it revengeful? Not at all. In fact, I would strongly recommend walk away from that person. There are such lovely, nice, loving, caring people all around you who are waiting for you. Why don't you walk towards them so that you create a distance between yourself and the person who is hurting uh, uh, you? In fact, it will prevent you from becoming uh, you know, revengeful. And uh, so one very important factor keep in mind, if any time you start getting these you know, thoughts of revenge, please tell yourself that you are destroying yourself. You're going to hurt yourself more than the other person. There is a Chinese proverb which says, a man who sets out to take revenge should first dig two graves. One for the person whom he is going to kill and one for his own uh, uh, self. Padma is asking how to deal with family that does not love you or care for you even when you need them. This, as I told you, no, are current issues. If you find yourself in a family or with people who do not love you or care for you, even when you need them or even when you are nice to them, it is an issue to be resolved now. Then we'll talk about how do you deal uh, with it once it is uh, over. You get the difference. Today I'm talking about one specific issue. Let us focus on that. That is, I have been hurt. The person who was hurting me is no longer hurting me. That experience is over. It happened one month back. It happened one year back. It happened 20 years back. Now what I am talking of, uh, uh, about, I need to work on it. Khadija says I can't take uh, uh, revenge from her. But truth is, in two years, I've slowly lost my health. Yes, Khadija, this is exactly what I'm telling you. Previously, also somebody had asked this question. Does it affect physically? It affects very badly physically. You will. Uh, run the risk of uh, you know losing your health because it is a disease which is festering inside uh, you. You need to overcome uh, uh, that. Okay. Usha says walking away and away from all who hurt today. I am alone with no friends at all. Not even one. Yes, Usha, I am willing to be your friend, and I promise you, I won't hurt you. Send me a mail. Tell me what is uh, um, happening in your life. I'm not saying I'm some great guru or master or some person who can solve problem, but definitely I can help you to change your perspective. I can say for 100% certainty that you will not be alone if you walk away from people who hurt you because there are people waiting for you who do not want to hurt you. They want to care for you and they want to love uh, you. Noor Sabha has rightly said forgiving and forgetting will only make you uh, stronger. These are the little, little things that I uh, want to please, you know, uh, um, uh, focus uh, uh, on. Someone close has demeaned you by passing sexual remarks. How to forgive? See, the act is not important. Somebody has passed sexual remarks. Somebody has cheated you of money. Somebody has insulted you in front of somebody else. Somebody has uh, you know, purposely stopped you from progressing in life and achieving uh, something. All those are immaterial. My focus is on what is my feelings, the emotions today. Yes, Anu, I am very much willing to be your uh, uh, friend. I'd like to connect with you. You know, at an individual level, and let's discuss a lot of things that we can uh, do. Uh, Adrija says, but how to forget, how to forgive. How to forgive, I can tell you. How to forget, nobody in this whole world can tell you. How can you forget consciously? You know, there's an interesting proverb which says that the first people to enter into heaven will be the atheists. You know why? Because every day they keep chanting, there is no God, there is no God, there is no God. So they take the name of God more than the people who actually, you know, uh, submit themselves to God. So you cannot forget something consciously. 
Atiya says, would love to work for you and your academy. Most welcome, Atiya. We look for people like you, genuine, caring human beings and who are, you know, are willing to be with us. Okay. Now, in the second half, I'm going to do th two things. One is, of course, continue to respond to your questions and comments, which I always uh, enjoy doing because I also learn a lot. And I'm also going to give you one, two, three, four, five uh, points on the healing uh, process. Okay. So halfway through, you know what I am entitled to, right? I am entitled to my cup of uh, tea. Just give me a minute and I will be back. Hi, everyone. So we have been talking about hurts and uh, uh, past hurt, many unresolved issues, some issues which we, you know, uh, put it somewhere in uh, inside as in some corner, uh, right? So here in Banjara, uh, you know, we have a set of trained counselors, fantastic uh, uh, team of counselors. And if you want to come discuss with us, come for your counseling sessions, sit down, we are all there just call us up and fix up an appointment, please come down. We are, we'll be more than glad to, uh, you know, be there uh, for you, help you out in, uh, you know, finding out what are those issues because they have to be resolved. Like Ali was saying, you know, before moving on to another new relationship, it's important that we start uh, resolving, right? Uh, a lot of things uh, in our uh, mind. And uh, for that, uh, you know, uh, we have absolutely free counseling in Banjara. And uh, the other uh, uh, very, very important, uh, you know, flagship uh, program of ours, Diploma in Counseling Skill, you know, this is the time of the year when the admissions are on for that. It's a one year part time program. So right now, uh, again, uh, our Banjara is bustling with activities. We have a lot of our students coming in. So the whole program itself starts with that introspection exercise. Right. So uh, it is called IAQ. That is where the students are sitting and they are writing, uh, you know, many of their uh, past uh, probably hurts or baggages that they've been carrying or whatever it is. So the whole program itself, the DCS program starts with uh, an introspection exercise. Uh, and um, and then, of course, uh, that is something which Ali himself personally looks at each student. It's a confidential document. So that's where it all starts. So it starts with self. The whole program starts with self. Then, of course, as we go into the program uh, about our close relationships and uh, many such things. And finally, how can we reach out to others, to the society in large? So it's a wonderful program. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, today, uh, you know, as you see, you'll find all of us uh, ready uh, to receive, uh, you know, some of our students. Uh, the weekend students will be coming today. So we're doing a soft launch. Uh, if you would like to uh, participate in any of our classroom, uh, you know, sessions, please let us know. In fact, you can come today also, uh, right? Just get in touch with us. And um, uh, here in uh, the classroom, we will uh, start our full fledged. We're just waiting for the government uh, uh, directives as to when the first uh, official class starts. But we are all set. Uh, to uh, start this program so uh, please come so whether you want to come yourself for a counseling session or you want to become a counselor and reach out to others uh, please uh, you know uh, call us up and we will be more than happy to help you so over to Ali can I quickly give you those few um, uh, um, uh, points. Rubita says, do you have an online course for counseling? Please get in touch with uh, Seema who was talking to you just now. She'll tell you all the possible courses online, offline, without line, with line, all those things. You can have a detailed discussion uh, uh, with uh, um, her. Uh, yes, uh, these sessions are recorded. Uh, Facebook uh, uh, keeps it uh, alive and uh, you can watch it. So if you miss out on any Saturday at 11 o'clock, if you are busy, the only thing that you're going to miss out is this interaction which we are starting uh, now. Other than that, as far as whatever I'm speaking, you can definitely um, have it later. At your leisure, you can log into Facebook Banjar Academy page and you will get it at any uh, uh, time. Okay. 
Yes, Jennifer, the same uh, thing as I was uh, telling you, when you say that my in-laws have hurt me many times and I'm bearing the silent treatment, I cannot walk away as my daughter needs them. So what I always believe in is when you're stuck with this sort of uh, you know, very difficult issues, please look for what we call as the via media between the two. We uh, generally tend to think only in black and white. You know? So we start thinking that either I stay with them and suffer for the rest of my life, that silent treatment, or I walk out on them and I protest and this. There are always via medias and more so when the child is involved. And if you say that the child needs uh, the grandparents and that's why you are uh, uh, sticking around. Again, I repeat what I told you in the beginning that uh, my team members, particularly the Gurukul team that led by Sonal, they will analyze and help you to understand what are the needs of your child, how you can fulfill those needs, and whether you can do it in different ways by reducing your own uh, um, hurt. Okay. So very quickly, I'll just uh, um, uh, give you. Yes, Alice says that uh, if I am ready, but the other person is not ready to uh, resolve, there's nothing you can do. What I am talking about uh, um, is resolving uh, uh, the... Uh, uh, issues in your own mind, as I told you earlier, I'm repeating again, that today's topic is dealing with past hurts. So if you are in a relationship where you want to resolve and improve that relationship and the other person is not willing, it's a live issue. We will talk about it now. So many of you have brought up this uh, thing. I think it is important. We will talk uh, uh, about it. I will take that up as an issue on one of the other Saturdays where we'll talk about this, you know, very difficult toxic relationships and where you have some complication, like because of your child, you cannot get away from your in-laws. All that we'll talk. Today, I'm talking um, about how to overcome or deal with part, you know, past issues. So quickly, I'll give you these five points and then I'll continue answering your uh, um, questions. Firstly, whenever you feel that you have been hurt by uh, somebody or put down by uh, somebody which has left you with a hurt, before you start resolving that, please start focusing on those who are good to you and even today who are good uh, to you. If you recall, if you went through some very bad trauma, let's say I fell sick and I was hospitalized or I went through a financial crisis or I went through a relationship crisis, inevitably I remember and recall and say, but for my mother, my sister, my best friend, my so-and-so who stood by me, I would have collapsed. Very often that happens. Now, this mother, sister, best friend, colleague, whoever stood by me, I need to first focus on them. They are my strength. Even if somewhere I've drifted away from them, before I start resolving the past hurts and trauma, let me get back to focusing on these people and strengthening my relationship with them. That should be our first step. Second step is, as I told you, stress is cumulative. So you may have different types of you know, uh, issues which have all piled up. So don't focus only on one. If in-laws are hurting, there may be other issues where which you have carried, maybe even from before your marriage. So list down all of them. Understand that it is I am hurting not just because of this one thing that has happened to me, but because of one, two, three, four. That's why I told you right in the beginning, make a list of everything that has uh, happened and then prioritize. Which are the ones that I need to resolve? Which are the ones that are affecting my day-to-day -to -day life today? Those are the ones I should give priority to and resolve them first. If I learn to do that, I can take it up one at a time. Otherwise, I will get overwhelmed with too many things. This one also was bad to me. In office also, I'm suffering. At home also, I have to go through. Check it out. Okay, right now, office, I can somehow mentally insulate myself. I've got this horrible boss. It's okay. I can't do anything about it. I'll go do my work and come back. So for the time being, at least, I know I can tolerate that. But at home, with somebody who is near and dear to me, I think I need to resolve uh, uh, that. These are the ways in which I, you know, I need to prioritize. The third is to talk it out with the right people. You know, as one of you mentioned that the more I walk away from uh, people who hurt me, the more lonely I'm getting. I, what I need to do is to learn the technique of identifying the right person who I can trust and who I can 
share with and with whom I can look for solace. How do I do that? Start off with talking about simple things. Something which is not very personal to you. You say, okay, this friend or neighbor seems to be nice. Maybe I can get some emotional support and I can you know, do my rebuilding with the support of this uh, person. Start off by just saying that, you know, my maid servant is so upset. Her husband beats her up. And I also feel very bad every time that she comes and says this. It upsets me. Actually, sometimes in the night I lay awake thinking, is she getting beaten up by her husband? Tell that to this lady, whoever it is. If that person immediately starts giving you some unwanted advice, no, 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 you tell her to go to the police. You should not keep quiet. Women are always you know, getting oppressed like this. We should not allow the men to do this something. She may even say uh, things like, why are you bothered? You have these labor class people. No, they keep beating each other and they get away. You know, you don't bother your head. The moment you start getting this sort of responses back off and say, no, I'll continue to remain a friend, neighbor, colleague, whatever I am to this person, but I'm not going to share anything personal. So that way you slowly start building uh, up. If you don't do that, then what Nida is saying, because of past events, my perspective of other people has changed. I take everything negatively. And that is the reason, Nida, why we are talking today about you know, dealing with the past uh, hurts. If I work on the past um, uh, hurts, then slowly my perspective will um, you know, uh, come down. Then, you know, go on developing this, what we call as the positive mental attitude. I was just writing for my Facebook page, a small this thing about gratitude. Have we learned to feel and express gratitude, thankfulness to the good things that have happened to me, to the nice people who are around me? We sometimes tend to ignore and take them for granted. When somebody asks me, hey, you had mentioned long back that uh, you have this uncle who right from your childhood has been very nice to you and he's very kind. And how is he doing? Uh, yeah, he is doing fine. But uh, no, I'm not sure. I'm not in touch with him of late. You know, he lives in such and such city. So I've not been able to contact now, when I have such a person in my life who has been unconditionally giving emotional support to me, positive strokes, encouragement, why am I neglecting him to the extent that I say, yeah, he must be OK. I'm not very sure about it. And that is what leads me towards focusing only on the negative uh, people, only on the hurts. And that is what also leads to this thing which uh, you, know, you said that uh, I uh, myself started becoming negative. There are people who go about saying, you can never trust relatives. They're all after your property only. There's no such thing as a genuine friend in this world. You know, Friends are all in their own world. They don't care for you. I feel very sad for such people. They've allowed themselves to go down, down, down. They have not done these exercises which we are talking about today to resolve the past issues one by one. And also start focusing equally on the good things that are happening. I refuse to believe that there is a single human being in this world who has not had some good experiences or the other, who has not gone through joyful moments, who has not you know, felt that happiness of small, small things or some really touching incidents which have remained as nostalgic uh, uh, memory. Varnika says, what if I have been fighting it all alone always no one seems to help. That is what I was cautioning you, Varnika. It's a very, very strong statement. No one seems to help. Just to give an example, I'm not boasting. Sitting here, myself and our entire team of Banjara, we are here to help. We have no vested interest. We don't charge money for uh, um, counseling. We don't want some great name or some awards or anything of that sort. We don't want you to convert your religion or anything. We have genuinely felt that one way of improving one's own life is to help in improving somebody else's life. That's our only intention. Now, like us, we are a team of so many in Banjara. There are so many other Banjaras available. 
there are nice, quiet, unassuming people right next to you, among your relatives, among your elders, among your neighbors. Please make sure that you are not alone always, Varnika and everybody else. Look around and you will find people who may not fight the battle for you, but who will stand next to you and say, if you fall down, I'm, I'm going to be there to protect you. Emotionally fall down. They are there. We just have to look for uh, them. Jyoti says, I'm interested in doing a course. As I told you, please get in touch. Our email ID is uh, being put over here. Uh, Seema's phone number is being put up. Either make a call or send us an email. We'll give you all the details of the different uh, uh, courses that uh, um, we um, have. So Alice says, as you said, resolve. I was asking same, how to resolve when the other is not ready. That's what I told Alice, that this is something I don't mind again discussing with you at an individual level. And I will also, uh, now that uh, many of you have brought up this point, I will also work out a, uh, you know, one of these Saturday uh, issues where we'll talk about dealing with this toxic relationship. But today, let me focus entirely on how to overcome something that happened in the past. Supposing you had a bad relationship, whether the other person resolved or not, now that the person is no longer affecting you or hurting you, either the person is no longer in your life or the person is there, but the person cannot hurt you as uh, he or she used to do earlier. Now, how do I move on in my own mind? How do I resolve it? Remember, sometimes your own mind can be a very great enemy. If I suffer, for example, uh, you know, uh, low self-esteem, I start putting myself down more than anybody else who puts me down. So I need to work on building self-esteem. That's a topic by itself. That's an issue by itself. I have a booklet called Building Up Your Self-Esteem in which I've given practical exercises, tips, techniques, how to build your self-esteem if you feel that you know your worth, self-worth has gone down or you're not being able to come up to your potential. Each of these things are possible. That's the beauty of it. So much is happening in terms of moving uh, you know, uh, forward and whatever uh, we can uh, do. Nida says, I need to be healed completely. Sorry to be a little critical, Nida, but there is no such thing as healing completely. Is there anybody who can say my physical health is perfect? No. It can be better than what it is now. If I have some pain, I can reduce it. If I have some lim uh, limitations, I can overcome uh, them. If I'm getting tired or if my sleep is bad, I can improve on it. Never look for perfection or say that I want to be healed completely. Uh, ah, Priya says, I feel like I'm in your class. Happy to see that as usual, you picked such a relevant topic. Thank you very much, Priya. It is because of these little, you know, Pushes that you people keep giving me. That's why you go ahead. Yes, Anu, I agree with you. Toxic relationships would be a good um, um, topic. I was actually making a mental note of it. So now I will make a written note uh, also so that I don't forget. I'm also getting old. We will definitely uh, plan it out maybe by next month because the next two, three, four weeks, we generally fix up the topics in um, advance. But we will definitely uh, do this. Eventually, the aim should be then I talk about, you know, dealing with past hurts. The more you keep the same way as somebody said that I'm becoming negative because of the hurts and the pains that I have gone, the reverse is possible. If I make these efforts to go on, you know, resolving each one of my past hurts, I develop what they say in management jargon as PMA, positive mental attitude. And that takes me through any uh, you know, uh, things. Yes, Navina, I also agree with this uh, wonderful quote that you have uh, 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 written over uh, uh, here, that pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Same thing applies to mental pain. It is inevitable. Somebody will hurt you. Somebody will cheat you. Some people will do it purposely because they don't like you or they want to put you down or they're jealous of you. Some people will do it without realizing that they are doing it with good intentions. Either way, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Yes, Salma, 
uh, have a talk on how to deal with negative people. That's what that is exactly what Anu also said about you know they become toxic relationships. We will uh, definitely I'll fix that uh, um, up. Uh, Kirti says dealing with past hurts maybe heals one's soul in itself. Yes, Kirti, I agree with you. Except that I am one person who doesn't know much about the soul, so that's why I don't want to comment about it. I know my S O L E soul very well. So I know which shoe fits me and what uh, I should wear. But um, as far as uh, SOUL is concerned, I do agree. In principle, I agree with uh, you know what Kirti said. But I am not an expert on uh, this. That you know, does it heal one's soul? How does the soul get healed? That's a different topic. I'm sure there are enough people who are wise enough and who are you know capable enough to answer those type of uh, uh, questions. Keeping the hurt inside the mind, Jyoti says, will hurt us more when we get old. Yes, Jyoti, I'm glad you brought this up because this is something that I want you to insulate yourself. As you get older, as you see, you know, your loved ones disappearing one after another, as you find that your social circle starts getting limited, your mobility is affected, you can't step out. Today, I feel sad to say that there are lakhs and lakhs of senior citizens who have literally been locked up in their houses by their children saying that, no, there is one monster called Corona who is just waiting to see, ah, this one is above 60, this one is above 70, come grab hold of this uh, uh, person. I don't know who will get Corona and who will not get Corona. People who are sitting at home for the last one year have got Corona. People who have been out on the roads, left, right and center have not got Corona. I don't understand. I'm not a medical doctor or an epidemiologist or a virologist. But what I do know is that if things go on like this and if you you know grow older and find yourself in that sense of loneliness, all these negative memories will come and hit you very badly at that time. And if you have not resolved them, they will make your last sunset years very miserable. Raji is asking, should we live in the moment or dwell on past hurts? What I feel, Raji, is that once in a while, you do live in the moment, enjoy the moment. But once in a while, stop, introspect, review. As I started off by saying in the beginning, this weekend, sit down and make a list of all your um, experiences. Often you are told to move on. but you can't move on without resolving. Remember that also. So people who look for shortcuts, people say, it's okay, yaar. whatever has happened has happened. Don't worry about it. Everything will be all right. What is there? Something. You know, I don't believe in that. I think sometimes, you know, time is not the best healer. You need to actively do the uh, things. Okay, Ajin has asked, please repeat the points on how to resolve past hurts. I'll do it quickly because I've got so many other questions uh, also coming up. Focus and value the people who have stood by you or who are standing by you so that you counterbalance those people who have hurt you. Go on focusing on uh, them. Add on what are the total number of things that have hurt. Sometimes we get focused only on one thing. We cannot resolve it because there are other hurts also which are there. The same way as a good doctor checks you up completely and not, does not do the surgery or the treatment only on one uh, symptom. So you should do the same thing with regard to your uh, mind. Ensure that you do not talk to the wrong people, but do talk to a few selected right people about what uh, is uh, uh, happening. Do not get into this why me type of uh, uh, syndrome. Look at the present, look at the uh, future and develop this positive mental attitude. These are the five very simple um, uh, points. Priya says, it doesn't matter who hurt you or broke you down. What matters is who made you smile again. Yes, Priya, absolutely. There's another nice proverb which says, it is not important how many times you stumbled and fell down. What is important is that how many times you got up. If how many times you got up is one more than the times you fell down, that is good enough. You're still walking. You're still progressing in uh, 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 life. Okay, Jyoti says people hurt you past. Now, fine. Because if seeing your present wealth status in society, do we let those people in your life again or keep distance? Once bitten, twice shy. If there have been bad experiences, as far as possible, I would tell Jyoti and all of you, avoid. There are very good people. There are other silent, humble, simple people who will make your life joyful. 
Why take a risk of allowing those people back into your life as far as how you want to do some charity to them? Do it. Do a good deed and send them off, but don't allow them to come into your uh, uh, life. Yes, Kumar, I remember you. You were our 2006 uh, uh, batch. And Kumar says that I'm not getting old. I'm getting rich by nurturing many people like uh, uh, him. Thanks, Kumar. I feel very humbled when you say that. Yeah, chronologically, I'm getting old. Mentally, if I'm uh, you know, not getting too old, I think one of the reasons is because I do not allow past hurts to keep hurting me. What I am telling you is not a theory. It is something which I practice. And that's why I can speak with that level of you know, uh, persuasion or that level of genuineness because I know how it works and how it uh, um, um, well, Poonam says how to keep yourself detached from your very near ones who are hurting you again and again. I, I come back to the same point, Poonam. Those who are hurting you right now, that is what we call as the toxic relationships. I'm going to fix up a meet, you know, a Saturday uh, uh, session only on that. Where you are currently going through bad, toxic, abusive relationships. We will talk about that. That's a topic by uh, uh, itself. Yes, Noor, I agree with you that people who hurt us are not worth our attention in whatsoever uh, uh, concern. Neelam says some traumas just do not go away. They fade for some time, but they come up just as vividly what to do. Thanks, Neelam, you brought that up because inevitably I come across people. I tell them, okay, when you spoke about your uh, life, you mentioned about this very traumatic uh, phase that you went through. Yes, 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 Ali, but I'm through with that. I am happy with that. That happened. Yeah, yeah that time it was bad. But uh, now I'm comfortable. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't know how to convince these people that it is not that easy. And the more vehemence with which they say that I'm over it and I don't need healing, the more my antenna goes up. So when you find that they fade for some time, then come up as vividly. It is like a chronic hurt, a physical hurt. If there is something embedded in my body and something is paining me, after some time, it may look like the pain has gone away, but again, it will uh, come back. The classic example of that is uh, toothache. You get a toothache and you say, no, I don't want to go to the dentist. I'll just uh, uh, you know, put some eucalyptus oil and uh, be done with it. What happens? After a few days, the toothache comes back again. The same thing happens to the uh, you know, uh, mind. Yeah, Vanika is asking, is a session possible over phone or email? Definitely, both over phone as well as over email. If there is something personal you want to interact, as I said, that I'm willing to be your uh, friend. If you want to have a one-to-one -one, uh, email chat uh, with me, Sonal is just putting up my personal email ID, which is alikhwaja50 at gmail.com. Please send me a mail on that. That's my personal ID. It remains confidential. Anything that you want to discuss, we can... You know, start off a beautiful relationship by interacting, by seeing what best can be uh, um, done about others. Anu says, how does one know if we are getting hurt or if we are the ones hurting others? It can happen both ways. Don't uh, worry about putting labels on it. But if you are getting hurt, do something about uh, uh, you know, whatever can be uh, uh, done. Kanaka says, we connect the hurt more to the person than the situation. Yes, that's what I started off, if you remember Kanaka, right in the beginning by saying that if a tsunami hits me, I say it is God's will and I can take it. But if somebody comes and demolishes my uh, house, I get very badly hurt. Why did he do this uh, uh, to me? That's how it uh, uh, goes. So as I said, every Saturday, we try to take up some topic and focus on that. What I want you to do is do not allow yourself to get distracted in five different things. I know that it is very tempting to connect A to B and B to C. Yeah, but this is also happening to me or that also happened to me. Or right now I am facing uh, this. But when you take up an issue, please go ahead and resolve it. The same way as I told you, if you have a toothache, don't say, okay, I will also go to the doctor and check why I am get getting a stomach ache. And if you are going to the dentist for a toothache and the dentist says that I, you need to go through this treatment, please complete that treatment. Yes, you are having a bad head, uh, stomach ache. You go to the gastroenterologist uh, at your convenience and start that healing separately. But don't mix up the two uh, issues. So that is what is my aim. That's why I focus today. I'm sorry some of you kept on asking how do you, you know, resolve things which are happening right now. I did not go into that primarily because then I would be digressing from the main uh, topic. All the others, I hope I have been able to give you some input, some takeaway, something which will help you in future to 
not only you know make your life a little better but also you know if you can uh, uh, help others because the moment you start a healing process you start becoming better it becomes very easy and very convenient to help others that's the message that i want to leave you um, with that it is not enough to work on yourself the moment you find that working on yourself is helping please immediately start reaching out at least to one or two people and you will see the joys of reaching out to others so with that let me wind up as always we start on time and end on time it is exactly noon and i wish you all a very wonderful saturday weekend and see you again next saturday at 11 o'clock bye bye